Hello everybody and welcome to Conditionals and Converses. In class today you should have received your Cornell notes, if not they can be found on the webpage that says Conditional Notes at the top. So here's what you should have. Okay, you'll, f you'll see on the left it'll sell say titles. This side is going to follow exactly with what I do in the next few slides to this video. On the right hand side is where you write all of your notes. Okay? On the bottom of that first page that's shown, it says summarize this page of notes. If you want to pause the video and summarize the page, feel free. You can do it at the video, after the video, however you feel like you want to do it. On the third page, you'll see notes summary. You're going to answer questions one through six after you watch the video and bring them in with you to class. Okay, so let's get into the material. A conditional. What is a conditional? A conditional is a logical statement that includes a hypothesis and a conclusion. It is usually written as an if-then statement. So, an if-then statement consists of two things. A hypothesis. A hypothesis follows the if and the if-then statement. Okay? And the conclusion follows the then in an if-then statement. Let's look at some examples. So, here we're going to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. So in order to identify our hypothesis, we know that the hypothesis follows the if. So we're going to circle the if. If it is 2.11 p.m. on a school day, then Katie is in geometry. So if it is 2.11 p.m. on a school day is our hypothesis. Now we know how to find the conclusion. We know the conclusion follows the then in an if-then statement. So our conclusion is Katie is in geometry double underline the conclusion. Let's try the next one. We're going to circle the if and we're going to identify the hypothesis by single underlining it. If you want to be fit is our hypothesis and our conclusion is then get plenty of exercise. I want you to pause the video now and answer number two on your own. Okay, so you should have if and our hypothesis, your hypothesis should be you can accept defeat and open your pay envelope without feeling guilty, then you're stealing is our conclusion. Okay, so now we know what a conditional statement is. It's an if then statement. So we're going to take the sentences below and we're going to write them as a conditional statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what our hypothesis is. Glass objects are fragile. Well here our object is glass objects and we know that they are fragile. So we're going to start with if an object is glass okay that's our hypothesis now we're going to write our conclusion then it is fragile okay Let's try the next one. All obtuse angles measure greater than 90 degrees. All right, our hypothesis, our hypothesis is all obtuse angles. And we know that they measure greater than 90 degrees is our conclusion. So let's write that out. If an angle is obtuse, Then the measure is greater than 90 degrees. Okay, next I want you to try number one on your own. Good weather makes a picnic enjoyable. So pause the video and do number one on your own. Okay. So, you should have have good weather as your hypothesis makes a picnic enjoyable because that's what our conclusion from our hypothesis. So, if the weather is good, is our hypothesis, conclusion is then the picnic is enjoyable.
Okay. Negation. Now, negation is something we need to be careful with because a lot of people misunderstand this. Negation is the opposite of the original statement. It, a lot of people associate negating something is as nodding something. So, for example, here we have the original statement is the ball is red. The negation is the ball is not red. So this is why a lot of people associate negation with nodding something because we took an original statement and said the ball is red and we made it not. The ball is not red. However, all we really did was take the opposite of the original statement. Like the next example. Billy Bob did not attend class today. Well, the opposite of that statement is Billy Bob did attend class today. So here, we did not the example. We just took the opposite of the original example. So make sure that you're careful with that. Okay, a counterexample is the case where the conjecture is false. Okay, with a counterexample, all you need is one counterexample to prove a statement to be false. So I could give you a million things that make a statement true, but as soon as someone tells me, gives me an example that makes it false, the entire example becomes false. The entire statement becomes false. So let's look at this example. If it is February, then there are 28 days in the month. Is this straight statement true? No, it's false. Why is it false? Because I can give you one example why it's false. What about the leap year? The leap year makes February 29 days. So because I gave you one example of why this statement is false, it is no longer true. Let's try the next one. If it is not a weekday, then it is Saturday. Is this statement true? Let's see if we can come up with an counter example. If it is not a weekday, then it is Saturday. Well, couldn't it also be Sunday? A weekday is Monday through Friday, right? So I gave one example why this statement is false. Now I want you to try two and three. Pause the video and try two and three. Okay. If you live in a country that borders the United States, then you live in Canada. Counterexample. Couldn't you live in Mexico? So that is my counterexample to prove that this statement is not true. If you play a sport with a ball and a bat, then you play baseball. What about softball? There are two different sports that involve a ball and a bat. Sure, you can think of more examples for this. Okay. Let's move on to using a Venn diagram. We're going to use similar Venn diagrams that we use um, in our last unit, such as a linear pair and a supplementary angle. We knew that a linear pair could be a supplementary angle because they both um, were 180 degrees, they could be adjacent. But we knew that supplementary was inside a linear pair because a supplementary angle could be non-adjacent as well. So let's try this same exact kind of Venn diagram with this example. If you live in the D if you live in DC, then you live in the US. Okay? Well DC is in the USA, right? The USA isn't in DC. DC so the USA is our big outer circle. If you play the flute, then you are a mus musician. Well, musicians are going to be our outer circle because not all musicians play the flute. But the flute is if with inside because people that play the flute are musicians. All right, pause the video and try numbers two and three. For number two, you should have acute on the outside and 40 the measure 40 on the inside because not all acute angles are 40 degrees but all 40 degree angles are acute okay number three 
Vegetables should be the big circle and carrots should be the inner circle. Not all vegetables are carrots, but carrots are definitely vegetables. Okay, so next we're going to move on to writing the converse. Now what is the converse? The converse is a statement formed by exchanging the hypothesis and conclusion of a conditional statement. So here, in this example, we have the conditional statement, if a figure is a square, then it has four sides. Let's identify the hypothesis. If a figure is a square, and our conclusion is then it has four sides. Okay, so we're going to write our converse. We're going to exchange the two. Okay, be sure to identify the object in the hypothesis, which is what we did. A figure is a square. Do not use they, it, or any terms like that when you write the when you rewrite the converse in the hypothesis. Okay, so let's see how this is going to work. If a figure has four sides, then it is a square. So notice how we did not use the terms they, it, or anything like that. We said if a figure has four sides. So this it right here, we eliminated it. And we wrote it, rewrote it as if a figure has four sides. Then it is a square. Okay? Is this statement true? Is this true? No. Why is it not true? We had to find a counterexample. Well, can our counterexample be a rhombus or a parallelogram or a kite? Any geometric figure that has four sides, but it's not a square. Rectangle? I'm sure you can think of many more. Okay, number two. If two angles are congruent, our hypothesis, then they have the same measure, our conclusion. Don't forget, when we write, rewrite this converse, we do not want to have they in our hypothesis. Okay, so if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. Notice how we eliminated the word they and rewrote it. If two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. Okay, is this statement true? Well, yes. We can't find a counterexample because we all know if two angles have the same measure, they are congruent. We just studied this in our last unit. Awesome. So this is the end of the video. What I want you to do now is you should be on the, bot on the third page, and underneath where your notes are, it says Notes Summary. I want you to answer those six questions and bring this back with you to class tomorrow because we're going to have a think pair share with your table buddy. You guys are going to exchange what you have written down for your summary. And then we will discuss in class. See you tomorrow.